All right, we start a new chapter today, chapter three, and uh, this is going to be a more in-depth look at uh, a previous lesson that we did several weeks ago, lesson one seven, where we talked about transformations, and we spent time in lesson one seven uh, discussing looking at problems involving three different transformations. Uh, translation, which is another word for a shift or a slide or a move. Uh, reflection, which is another word for a flip. And then we did rotations. And so that was one lesson that touched on all three of those transformations. Well, in chapter three, they, the, the text is now going to separate each of these into its own lessons so we can just have a little bit more in-depth look at these three different transformations. And so today, as you can see in the slide, we're going to deal strictly with reflections, and that'll be the focus of today's topic, today's lesson. So let's get started. So just uh, be to begin with, uh, doing some terminology, a uh, little review, uh, talking about reflections, that is a flip over a line, and that line is called the line of reflection. Each point on the what we would call the pre-image, that's the figure before the reflection takes place, the pre-image points and the image points, that's after the reflection, are the same distance. So we need to keep that in mind as we work today, the same distance from the line of reflection. And a reflection is also known as a rigid motion. Uh, you might, might also see these referred to as rigid transformations. Just in case you see that pop up, you'll, you'll know what's being referred to. Some, talking about lines of reflection, some of the common lines of reflection, we've seen some of these already from our previous lesson. Uh, the x-axis or the y-axis, those are the ones that we primarily dealt with back in lesson 1-7. You can also have vertical or horizontal lines in the form of, vertical lines would be in the form of x equals some number some constant, and horizontal lines would be in the form of y equals some number, constant. And then you could also have diagonal lines that serve as lines of reflection, like the two lines y equals x, we'll deal with these later in this lesson, or uh, the counterpart y equals negative x. And so we'll, we'll take a look at what those look like in just a bit. So to begin with, uh, let's do some a little review on uh, reflecting over the x and the y axis. I don't think we'll need to do all of these. Uh, we'll just do a sample just to uh, remind you of what we did. So the instructions here are we're going to graph the figure, which in this case is triangle ABC, and we're going to graph the image under the reflection in number one that's going to be reflected on the x axis. And then we have to give the coordinates of the image, which would be the, the pre-image after the reflection. All right, so let's plot uh, negative 4, 2, 4, 7, and 5, 1. And I'll do my best to connect these with a freehand straight line. It's not real straight, but we'll pretend. Uh, so let's label the vertices. So uh, this is vertex A, vertex B, and C. And so a reflection over the x-axis, just by way of review, I'll do the the image in a different color. Uh, we can show that reflection with these ordered pairs by just changing the sign of the y coordinate. All right, so from a to a prime, a prime would be negative four, negative two. So we did something like this 
on a couple of our tests so far. Uh, for B prime, we would change it from 4, 7 to 4, negative 7. And then C prime would be 5, negative 1. So to reflect over the x-axis, uh, you just change the sign of the y-coordinate. And now let's plot those. And we'll have the graph of the image. So there's negative 4, negative 2, 4, negative 7, and 5, negative 1, right there. I'll see if I can connect these with straight lines. Pretty close, and now we'll label uh, the vertices of the image. So here's A prime, B prime, and then C prime. All right, so there's an example of a reflection on the x-axis, and we'll just jump down to number three, and we'll do an example of a reflection on the y-axis. All right, so let's first plot the four vertices for this trapezoid. Uh, point F, vertex F, is at uh, negative 5, negative 2. Five, negative two. That's F. G is at negative two, negative two. H is zero, negative six. And negative eight, negative six. That's vertex I. So we'll connect them. Okay, and now let's reflect this on the Y axis. So just before when we reflect, reflected over the X, we changed the sign of the Y coordinate. Well now when we reflect over the Y, we're gonna change the sign of the X coordinate. So F prime, is going to be 5, negative 2. G prime will be 2, negative 2. H prime will be still 0, negative 6. And then I prime will be 8, negative 6. All right, so let's plot those. There's F prime, G prime is 2, negative 2, zero negative 6 is both H and H prime, and then 8, negative 6 is I prime. Connect these. And you see the reflection of the pre-image in red. The reflection then gives us the image in blue, and there are the vertices of the image. Okay, so those are reviews of reflecting over both X and Y, how we handle those to come up with the vertices of the image. And now let's, um, let's reflect over lines that are not the X and Y axis. They're other vertical and horizontal lines. Okay, so for example, this triangle that we're told about, JKL, is going to be reflected over the line X equals 4. So I'm going to change my color here. I'm going to draw the line X equals 4. I'll just use a dotted line. This is going to be the line of reflection. I'm oh, sorry, that's y equals 4. I don't want that. Let me draw x equals 4. All 
Okay, and now let's plot the points for triangle JKL. So J is 1, negative 1. K is 2, 3. L is 3, negative 2. There is the pre-image, and I'll just go ahead and label our vertices J, K, and L. All right, so to reflect over X equals 4, we just have to make sure that our corresponding points, our K prime, J prime, and L prime, are on the same horizontal line, but they're the same distance equidistant from this vertical line x equals 4. So since k is two units to the left of that, I need to make k prime two units to the right. And down here, j, I'm on the line, j is three units to the left, so j prime will be three units to the right. L is one unit to the left, so L prime is one unit to the right. And now I connect those. And let's uh, write down the vertices of the image. So K prime is six, three, K prime. J prime is seven, negative one. L prime is five, negative two. All right, seven, one, two, three. Let's see, six, three, okay. Just wanna make sure I got them all right. J is seven, negative one. Okay, looks good. All right, so that's a reflection over X equals four. And now let's do a reflection over a Y line. We'll do uh, this one, number seven, Y equals two. All right, so let me go ahead and just draw Y equals two. It's going to be our line of reflection. And we have this parallelogram CDEF, vertices negative 4, negative 4. It's vertex C. Negative 2, 0. Vertex D. 6, 1. Vertex E and four negative three. All right, and we'll connect those. And there's our pre image parallelogram. And so now to get the image. I'm just going to make sure that these uh, pre-image points and the image points are the same distance away. Now vertically, they should be on the same vertical line, but they're the same distance away from the line of reflection. So D prime is gonna be two units above. C prime since C is one, two, three, four, five, six units below, then C prime needs to be one, two, three, four, five, six units above. All right, E is one unit below, E prime then will be one unit above. F is one, two, three, four, five units below. So F prime, one, two, three, four, five units 
above. And we'll connect those And you can see the reflection over that line, y equals 2. All right, so we'll write the coordinates of our reflection, the image. So let's see, uh, c is negative 4, c prime is negative 4, 8. E prime is six, three. D prime is negative two, four. And F prime is four, seven. Seven. Okay, so you see an example of reflecting over each of examples of parallel lines versus, not parallel, vertical lines versus horizontal lines, and um, pretty easy to do. And now we'll do a couple of examples of reflecting over y equals x and y equals negative x. Okay, so first of all, let's identify what y equals x looks like. Uh, I am going to draw a line here. We'll do a black line. Um, you should get familiar with y equals x. That's a pretty important line for other reasons later on in Algebra 2 and beyond. So here's y equals x uh, going through the origin yeah, I think I'll try that again. Missed that, so let me see if I can get it. That's pretty close. All right, it stretches from top right to bottom left, goes through the origin, has a slope of one. Might be off just a little hair, but I think you get the idea. So when we do the reflection over the line y equals x, what happens is we take the vertices of the pre-image and we just switch the coordinates. So we'll go back to red. Okay, so x prime will be negative two, negative five. Y prime will be four, negative three and z prime will be one, negative one. Okay, so let's put our image and pre-image together. So here's the pre-image, negative five, negative two. That's x, negative three, four. It's gonna be y and negative one, one is z. Right. And so we've already come up with the coordinates of the image. And so this will show the reflection. So negative two, negative five, is x prime, four negative three is y prime, and one negative one is z prime. And there you are, that's the reflection over y equals x. All right, now let's do an example of the reflection over y equals negative x. So we'll use number 11 as this example. So let me go ahead and draw y equals negative x for us. So that's gonna extend this way through the origin. All right, so that's y equals negative x. 
So to get the uh, coordinates for this reflection, we're, we are going to flip these coordinates, but we're also going to change the signs. Okay, so one, uh, negative 1, 3 becomes negative 3, 1. For B prime, 0, 6 becomes negative 6, 0. C prime becomes negative 5, negative 3. And D prime is still, it's negative 2, negative 2. Okay, so let's plot um, the pre-image, negative 1, 3. That's A. B is 0, 6. C is 3, 5. D is 2, 2. That is square A, B, C, D. And now we'll look at what the image looks like. So we've already come up with the points. So negative 3, 1 is going to be A prime. Negative 6, 0. B prime. Negative 5, negative 3 is C prime. And negative 2, negative 2 is D prime. Represents the reflected square ABCD. So we're picking it up, in other words, picking it up and setting it down, flipping it over the line y equals negative x. Okay, and then the remaining part of our lesson, we're going to be identifying the line of reflection. Okay, and uh, a good helpful hint here, it's sometimes helpful to find the midpoint of the corresponding points. So, uh, for example, if you look at this segment between um, k prime and k, the midpoint, of course, is right there. This one's probably pretty obvious. So the line of reflection is just going to be the y-axis, which is the line x equals 0. All right. And so for these, uh, number 14, um, What's the midpoint of these? You can kind of tell that these are being reflected over that line that we just looked at. I'll just freehand it, but that's that line, y equals negative x. If you look at this ordered pair, it's 1, 3. And if you look at this one, it's negative 3, negative 1. And that's what happens when you reflect over y equals negative x, you switch the ordered pair, the coordinates, and then you change their sign. So that would be y equals negative x. All right, and so it's pretty easy to spot. The midpoint between r and r prime is this vertical line right here. And we just have to write the equation for that. So that is the line x equals negative 3. All right, and so let's take a look now at number 16. So you can tell uh, if you compare t and t prime, notice that the x-axis is the line that is right in the middle. It represents the midpoint of those two points. And so the x-axis is going to be our line of reflection, and that's the line y equals 0. Right. And then number 17, uh, we can just take any of these. What about 
in between z and z prime. So what would the midpoint be? So one, two, three, four, five, six. It's six units uh, divided by two, so that would be three units would be the midpoint. That line right there represents the midpoint. One, two, three, one, two, three, and that's the line y equals one. And then here, um, you can kind of tell uh, these are reflected across a diagonal line. And for us, there's only two choices for diagonal lines. It's either y equals x or y equals negative x. For y equals x, um, these coordinates should just switch. So 1, 3 is c. And sorry, 1, 4 is C, can't count, and C, that's C prime, C is 4, 1. So whenever the coordinates within the ordered pair just switch places like that, then that's an indication that we're reflecting over Y equals X. All right, so I think that takes care of your notes, and I hope that's going to help you uh, with the rest of the assignment. And uh, if you have any questions about this, let me know.